my name is Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction, where you can find these album reviews. You can find our band interviews, and you can find live coverage of the concerts that we get. Um, I posted a poll on our Instagram uh, to post either Tides of Man's that tour or the Devil Wars Prada tour, No Sun, No Moon. Um, if you want to have your voice be heard, definitely go check out our, our store. Hopefully, it will be up at the same time. Um, if not, I think uh, Devil Wars Prada is in the lead, so um, I'll definitely try to get out that out by that week and then Tides of Man the following week. Um, but if you enjoyed that content, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. It really does go a long way, and uh, thank you guys for your support. So tonight, we're going to be talking about Cold Rain's new record, Fateless. <laughs> So, for those of you who haven't heard of this band, um, they are a band from Japan. Uh, they kind of have that mix of metalcore, post-hardcore, and like some alternative uh, sorts of vibes in in their music. Um, I actually did a review of one of their older, or not older records, but one of their records that came out, EP that came out um, around last year, uh, which was really great. I think it was called Chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken, um, and they've done two other great records and two records that were only in japan um <clears throat> they were on warp tour i think a few years ago uh and i don't know for me like i hadn't heard a lot about them i actually didn't even know that they were doing a new record um until i saw on their like snap story that they were like oh new record coming out so uh it might be just a japan exclusive um in terms of the cds uh, I might go and pick one up just because I really enjoyed this record. Um, spoiler alert, but I'll go through each track, give you my thoughts and opinions on it. I'm going to go through some pros and cons, and then I'm going to end it off with an overall rating. So the first track is called Envy. Uh, this actually happens to be the first single that they release and only single that they release for this record. And it happens to be one of my favorites. Uh, I feel like the track starts off with a really great energy to it. Um, has a great bounce, a great groove to it. I feel like this song definitely comes together at the chorus um, intersection, at least in my opinion. Um, I definitely feel like Masato's voice uh, cuts through the song in just a beautiful way. I've always thought his vocals are really on point, and I, I feel like, to me, he's a super underrated, clean vocalist. So if you haven't checked out that band uh, or Cold Rain, I would highly recommend checking them out. Uh, I feel like they are just overall an underrated band uh, that I feel like a lot of you will enjoy. But getting back to this track, um, I feel like the chorus is definitely catchy as hell, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, great cleans, great screams. There's, I think there's about a 50-50 mix. Um, I would say maybe even 60-40. I would say there's more cleans, definitely. Um, there's some really cool gang vocals that have this sort of accent piece uh, to the chorus, uh, which is really cool. There's this nice little breakdown between the 1 minutes and 20 second mark to the 1 minutes and 35 second mark, uh, which kind of has that sort of, again, metal core type of flair to it as well. Um, there's this nice little subtle electronic sort of element uh, throughout the track. Um, and there's this really cool guitar solo from uh, Ryu at between the 3 minutes and 25 second mark to 3 minutes and 41 second mark. Um, and like I said, I feel like it has really great energy. I think it's a great opener track to ultimately give the listener an idea of what to expect from this record if you haven't heard of this band i i, I feel like fateless is a really good um or envy is a really good track to start off fateless with um and just i, I feel like it kind of gives a summation of you know how their other records kind of sound within in a reason so uh we're gonna move into track number two which is feed the fire um there's this really cool solo guitar intro backed with some again some cool um electronic elements i know that one of their guitars ryu does a lot of the programming so it's cool to ha see that he puts a little bit more i wouldn't even say effort because i feel like there's the same amount of effort that goes into it but just uh, acknowledgement of it i feel like it's a little bit more forefronted um and uh, in some parts in some songs it's a little bit more understated so um this one is definitely a little bit more electronic I wouldn't say focus, but definitely has a little bit of more of electronic vibe. Again, I feel like there's a nice balance between screams and cleans. Um, and I feel like Masato has really worked both of those in very well. Um, really enjoyed the chorus on this one. Uh, I feel like there was a really great bridge in this track. has a nice break to it. Um, I feel like it offers a little bit of a differentiator um, in the track. Uh, it, 
but I feel like the last part of the bridge could really use um, a bit of a punch to it. I feel like it felt like it was la lacking, especially even the last chorus too. Uh, it just had this punch that was missing, um, in my opinion. Uh, it just didn't have that sort of uh, aggressiveness that I was expecting. Uh, it just feels very straightforward, and I wouldn't say um, it didn't lack emotion. I feel like it had some really great emotions in this track, um, but it just lacks that sort of just punch maybe like a cool little like lead part or you know maybe Masato could have done something interesting vocally um it's just lacking that little bit of flair that <clears throat> in my opinion would have just put it over the top so we're gonna move into track number three which is lost in faith this one is one of my favorite i feel like this one track this track grooves um and it is a great kind of follow-up to feed the fire which i didn't feel like i felt a little lackluster about that one um so Definitely enjoy that. I feel like this one is definitely on the heavier side as well. Um, but I feel like they counterbalance it with a lot of melody in the especially in the first verse. Um it starts off aggressive in the intro. It moves to a more melodic direction in the first verse, and they kind of transition between the two uh sounds throughout the track. I would say it's more primarily melodic parts in the verses and a little bit more grittier a little bit more rougher around uh the chorus parts uh it definitely is one of my favorite choruses off of fateless um there's quite a few but i would say that this one is in the top tier in my opinion um vocal melodies in this song uh were just awesome i feel like masato killed it on this one too uh there's this really hard hitting breakdown uh around the two minutes and three second mark to the two minutes and 16 second mark again having that sort of metalcore flair mixed into their sort of post-hardcore roots um i feel like this track again merges the best of both worlds um instrumentally i feel like um it has this really sort of upbeat sort of to to uh I guess accent the vocals uh, very well in my opinion. Uh, also, I feel like this is easily one of the best songs that uh, Cold Rain has ever written. I know that this is a lofty statement to have, but I definitely believe that this one is in amongst the top tier songs that they've written. Uh, there are a lot of other tracks off this record that I would also consider to be uh in those top tier of cold rain tracks as well so we're gonna move into track number four which is bury me uh liking the melodic guitar riff in the intro i feel like it has this cool sort of anthematic approach to it uh they have a few tracks that have that sound but definitely on this one you can hear that uh i like that this track sort of accents and shows off more of masato's cleans um again i feel like this one is more even like 70 30 uh, in terms of cleans, I would say there's little to no screaming on this track. Um, there are probably some parts with that, you know, there is a little bit of screaming, but for most, for the most part, it's mainly cleans. Um, I like that this one shows off a bit more of their mellow side. Um, I like that there are some tracks that a little bit are a little bit heavier, are on a heavier side, and those can show off, you know, Masato screaming. Um, and just their overall heavier writing style. Um, but I also appreciate the sort of tracks that I guess aren't as abrasive as well as just not being sort of so full fronted. It's very just kind of softer. You know, there's a little bit more tenderness to it. It has a little bit more of tender moments in it. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, the chorus is killer. I definitely feel like it's the focal point of this track. Uh, and I love the bridge as well in this track too. Uh, it has some cool little electronic layering that um, I feel like can be overstated or understated in a lot of these tracks. Um, but I feel like it's necessary to point out here and there uh, that there is a little bit of like sort of I don't I wouldn't even call it noise it just definitely kind of accents the instrumental bass and the vocals um which ultimately you know transpires into you know what makes this track really well put together I would definitely say that it's not a bad track but I I definitely wouldn't put it in my favorites I think it's it's a little bit too mellow for me um but I definitely feel like they ex used a different sort of side and 
you know, went a different direction with this one, uh, which I appreciate. So we're going to move into track number five, which is called Rip. Uh, this one has an interesting sort of intro as well. Um, really liking the harmonization in the verses. Um, there are some tracks that highlight that as well. Um, this one has done really well. Uh, I really feel like they've matched up Masato's voices um, together very well. I'd like to see how they, you know, kind of do it live. I know that I saw them at Warp Tour, and hopefully they'll be touring the U.S. Uh, really soon. Uh, but I do like this. Uh, and every time the chorus for me, every time I come and listen to this track, I was trying to figure out um, just the melody of the track being the instrumentals and even the vocals um, to me are very reminiscent of a track from really Red Hot Chili Peppers, Danny California. Um, even this, again, the melody is kind of similar to it. Um, but now every time I listen to it, that's all I think about when I listen to this chorus. So um, no pun intended, rip. Uh, it, it's still a really great track, but it's definitely one that I, I associate with another song, um, which is probably not a bad thing because the melody is really awesome. Um, but I definitely feel like the song is solid all around. Um, but in my opinion, I feel like there isn't something super intriguing about it. It's very straightforward, uh, much like uh, Feed the Fire. Uh, I feel like there isn't something that just grabs me and has that sort of punch uh, that I'm expecting. Uh, I would say that in a tier list, I would say that this one is better than Feed the Fire, but um, still kind of out of that range of favorites in my opinion. So we're going to move it into track number six, which is Inside Out. This one is one of my favorites. Uh, it has that sort of nostalgic pop, post-hardcore, I was going to say pop-punk post-hardcore sound to it um, loving the instrumentals in this track more specifically um, just that each track each instrumental has its own moment in the track um, there are some parts where it highlights the bass there are parts where it obviously highlights the guitars um, both rhythm and lead uh, as well as just the drumming and Masato's vocals I feel like it's just an overall balanced track where you can hear you know different sort of aspects of you know the band and how the sound kind of grows um in this one uh i definitely feel like this one has uh, just a bouncy and just great energy to it um it's definitely amongst the sort of heavier tracks uh off this record uh and i definitely feel like this one features more of the screams and just the more more of the aggression in this track um which Surprisingly enough, there aren't too many heavy tracks. There are some moments that have some heaviness into it, um, but I definitely appreciate when songs like these come around and kind of break it up a little bit. Um, there are some tracks that, again, more mellower in that more alternative state, and then there's some tracks that kind of lean more to the heavier post hardcore, even kind of borderline metalcore tracks, which I appreciate. So we're going to move into track number seven, which is Stay. Uh, I feel like this one is very different, um, and when you come to listen to this one, I feel like it's kind of the turning point. Uh, but between Inside Inside Out and Stay, I feel like those two are the sort of transitional tracks. Um, this Inside Out being more on the heavier side, and Stay, I feel like, is more like emotional, a little bit more just melodic in the way that it's approached. Um, and you can definitely hear that in the way that Masato does his vocals as well. Uh, I feel like he experimented a lot more in this one. Um, it accents a little bit more of his lower range, in my opinion, especially in the sort of first verse. Uh, you can hear some of his mid-range and even kind of low range, uh, which I feel like in a lot of these other tracks he hasn't been able to do. So I do appreciate that side of him. Uh, I also like the sort of acoustic, sort of softer uh, instruments in the intro and the kind of first verse of this track. Uh, the chorus, in my opinion, is really damn catchy. Uh, I love the melody that Masato uh, and Rio were able to come up with. Uh, I definitely like the bridge in this track. It has this cool solo from Rio as well um, between the 2 minutes and 10 second mark to the 2 minutes and 37 second mark. Uh, and I feel like the last chorus in this track would have just hit the next level is if they maybe went up a key or they did you know a sort of change that would have separated it from kind of the other verses and just the other sort of bridge um or not bridge other sort of choruses in my opinion uh, i i feel like it would have taken it home 
but I I do appreciate that they finished this track on, off on a strong note, just with this sort of extra production. Um, I feel like it kind of brought everything together and, and definitely finished this song out strong. So we're going to move into track number eight, which is Colorblind. This also happens to be a favorite of mine as well. I feel like... Um, that Masato just on this song really went in it, it definitely showcases his entire range and I feel like he pushed his range as well on this one there are some tracks where he just kind of take it took it to the next level and this one is definitely one of those uh, loving the harmonization in the second chorus I just feel like it added another dimension vocally um, and just sonically it just adds a nice kind of comparison between the two um, and also shows off his skill as well, just as a vocalist. Um, it just play, they just pl intertwine very well and play very well too. Um, the instrumentations were kind of just the cherry on top. Uh, the the vocals are just amazing, and just to kind of round it out with some awesome instrumentals, it couldn't have been done in a better way. I definitely feel like they accent the song very well, and just um, the leads in the intro and just the first verse who are just on another level in my opinion uh, It's definitely Again one of the best tracks off this record. So we're gonna move into track number nine, which is FTTT uh, This track is just insanely fast. Uh, it definitely took me by surprise upon first listen uh, It starts off with really high energy and kind of doesn't let go after that It just goes and just runs train um, in my opinion, uh, I also feel like this one highlights Masato's sort of higher range, especially the sort of falsetto -y sort of parts, um, more specifically in the choruses. I definitely feel like it's one of the heavier tracks off of Fateless as well. Uh, the drums, to me, felt like they were the real highlight of this track. They're really intense, very fast-paced. The sort of blast beats i wouldn't even consider blast beats because it's not going that fast but um it definitely has that sort of high energy and i feel like the drums definitely encapsulate that sort of high energy um and definitely create a really strong backbone for the track uh there's another really great solo from ryu at um the two minutes and 12 second mark to the two minutes and 40 second mark uh and it's definitely one of my favorites off the record in terms of the guitar solos um, in my opinion, so we're gonna move into track number 10, which is uninvited uh, This one has this sort of eerie piano intro to it in my opinion uh, with sort of Masato's vocals uh, There's it's definitely an interesting track one that again. I was not expecting much like uh, the l previous track FTTT uh, But I feel like this song picks up at around the minute and 43 second mark um, and at times it definitely reminds me a lot of Led Zeppelin's Cashmere as a sort of orchestral sort of symphonic sort of feeling to it um, It's definitely one of the black sheeps of the record. I appreciate the experimentation on this one um, I feel like it uses the best of uh, Masato's range as well, especially the falsetto parts I feel like it's really cool as well, um, and it also has a sort of darker undertone uh, to it, which I thought was really unique to this track, um, and unlike a lot of the other tracks off this record too. So we're going to move into track number 11, which is Aftermath. This one is one of my favorites off the record. Um, it's just really damn catchy, especially the chorus. Uh, I feel like they really sell it home on the chorus, in my opinion. Uh, the melody structure of the song. Uh, is just awesome. It will definitely get stuck in your head for me when I was listening to it This one was one of the tracks that I definitely came back to and was listening to more times than some of the other tracks off this record um, I didn't like the nice little breakdown around the 2 minutes and 18 second mark to the 2 minutes and 40 se 44 second mark. I feel like it was a nice little break um, and just broke up the track in a really interesting and unique way um, and I felt like it was a really solid one. So we're going to move into the last one, track number 12, which is A Decade in the Rain. Um, this one has this cool sort of anthematic intro. Um, liking that, Masato kind of puts a little bit of grit into his vocals. Obviously, he does both the cleans and the screams, um, but you can definitely hear it and make it out in the chorus. Uh, another cool solo from Rio at the 2 minutes and 41 second mark to the 3 minutes and 6 six second mark um 
it definitely combines a lot of elements of previous tracks on this record um, in my opinion uh, I also feel like it's a little bit, in terms of pace-wise, a little bit slower, um, but I definitely feel like it's solid songwriting, and I think it's a good closer track, in my opinion. I feel like it rounds out the, the album in a really good way uh, for, again, a really solid record. So, some pros and cons about this record. Really enjoyed the vocals, uh, both on the clean side and the scream side. I feel like Masato has kind of held the reins on both. I would say... More or less, I like his cleans a lot more. I feel like they're more expansive. Um, he has everything from really great lows to some insane sort of falsettos and highs. Uh, really catchy melodies and hooks. Uh, they really know how to work that well. I feel like um, this is kind of even a step up from the one that I even previously reviewed, Chapter 2. Um, I feel like they've come up with better melodies, better hooks. Um, the harmonization is really on point as well, too. Uh, really song, solid song writing and just structure. Um, I feel like each song didn't have something that I didn't like about it. Um, structurally, I feel like there were some really nice, you know, break parts with some breakdowns, but there's also some really, some really great parts that just stuck out, especially in songs like "Stay" and like "FFTT." Um, just those ones were really interesting in my opinion and definitely got my attention another one that's definitely on the list is uninvited uh two also i feel like there's a really great variety uh throughout the record uh there's some again heavier tracks there's some more melodic tracks um there's some really sort of interesting tracks like uninvited and stay um but then there's some more traditional tracks like envy aftermath um lost in faith kind of have those sort of, you know, nostalgic qualities about them. Uh, overall, s super solid record. I really don't have anything bad to say um, about the songs. Maybe songs over time will definitely get to that point where I'll enjoy them more. Um, some cons about it, I feel like there were some hit or miss moments, um, especially like in 12, there was just, it was just a little bit slower. I feel like if it was picked up a little bit more, it would definitely be in the sort of top tier tracks off this record. Um, and then there's just some interesting sort of switch ups. Bury Me, I feel like, was a little bit off too. Rip was pretty good. I feel like that one was a, was quite, kind of in the middle as well. Um, and there was some uh, little element of predictability. Some tracks you knew what you were expecting if you listened to this band. Um, it just had that sort of predictable element to it. But otherwise, for a band that's. I, I feel like super underrated. Um, I feel like they absolutely killed this record. It definitely combines a lot of what Vena has, as well as Chapter 2, which is, you know, what they did on that record. Um, and even previous work, as well, prior to Vena. Um, I feel like they've combined a lot of their elements. They've really kind of honed in on their sound. Um, and they really kind of expanded their sound as well, um, with some interesting tracks off this record. So... Uh, my overall rating for Cold Rain's Fateless, I'm going to be giving it a 9.5 out of 10. If you have not checked out this band, I would highly implore you to go do so. Um, let me know in the comments what your favorite tracks are um, off Fateless. Do you like my review? Do you think it was on point? Did you think it was not? I'd love some critiques on how I could do better. I know that I say um, in my opinion a lot. I know that I say definitely a lot and it's tough. So... I hope to be getting better at it, so if you can leave any feedback, definitely do so. I'd love to get better at doing this and just kind of critiquing my thoughts in a more intricate manner. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Definitely check this album out. Um, it comes out today, actually. Um, it's been out in Japan for, I think, 12 hours now or something like that. So definitely check this band out if you haven't. Um, highly underrated in my opinion definitely one of those bands to be on the lookout for and I hope that they do something in the US for Fateless I would definitely be stoked for that so um, if you enjoyed this review make sure to subscribe make sure to hit that thumbs up it really does go a long way and thank you guys for your support so my name is Brandon we hope you got your fix and we'll be talking with you soon peace hey guys hope you enjoyed the video uh thanks for watching of course uh if you enjoy what we do make sure to go check out the other series we do we do album reviews we do band interviews and we do live videos so definitely go check that out 
um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that, which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces.